So in addition to that, I mean, I, I, the fact that you ended it on wavering kind of then leads me to like my next question. Like, you know, you're ex-military and you had the PTSD. Like, let's just talk about that. Because, I mean, obviously with, with, with that particular syndrome comes with depression and all these other things that sure. you had to overcome to become sure, who you man. are. So let's talk through that journey for a minute. Yeah, man. I always I always like to say my journey started at 17, really, because at 17 years old, you know, growing up as a poor kid in Rochester, New York, from the hood, you know, you see nothing but really poverty, despair and lifelessness, really. Like everybody's walking around, you're looking at eyes and you just see none. Like everybody's numb. Somebody dies. It's just another person dying, another loss. Right. So coming from that, I really didn't value myself. I didn't have that sense of confidence or anything like that. So I act as though I was hardened because I felt like that's what I had to do. But deep inside, there was so much missing man. and there was so much anger right, about what was going on. So I ended up making some bad decisions, got locked up, faced seven years for an assault and robbery charge at 17. Um, and then that time that I was in jail, right in county jail, awaiting my sentencing, uh, my mom and my sister visited me. And I remember that day so vividly, man. Like they came to visit me and just seeing that pain in their face, I had never seen it before. And it really shook me because right? here I was, I didn't value myself or love myself. But them, that was my life. That was the only reason why I existed in my eyes. So to see that I hurt them, right, and I took a piece of them, I took their freedom with me because here they are coming up here watching me and visiting me. I had to do something about that. So I went up to that cell and I prayed to God, man, that he, he gave me another chance. And at that time, I made a promise to him. I said, I'm going to make sure I become the servant that you put me on this earth to be. Now, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know what the hell that meant at that time. I just knew that I needed to do something to get out of here. And lo and behold, you know, he let me out. I think it was like a month later, right? I was able to get out. The victims never showed. Prosecutors dropped the case and they gave me another shot. So I graduated school, tried the college thing, couldn't afford it, dropped out of that. And I ended up working two full-time jobs. Just did that for a few years, like four years. Then um, a recruiter used to work with me. He used to work weekends with me at a hospital I worked at. He was like, you know what? You should come down to the recruiting office. I, you know, I'm an Army recruiter, this and that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that because I have to do something. I have to do something to create an opportunity because nothing's coming for me. And I don't want to end up back in jail or dead. Those are the only two options we've seen, right? So I go down there. I do great on the ASVAB, which is the test you take uh, to see where you can place as far as jobs. And I picked IT. <laughs> and lo and behold, I shipped out a couple of months later, went to basic training. And basic was where I learned so much about myself. Because they say, you know, with any muscle, including your heart and your mind, right, you tear it down and build it back up, right? That's what strengthens you. You go through adversity, then you build yourself back up because you went through that. So I learned that I was a leader. I learned that I, I was actually compassionate. I learned that I wasn't this hardened person, right, doing these dumb things. I learned that I was actually more thoughtful than that. I actually cared what happened to people. I um, mean, I was able to show that, right? Um, so fast forward, man, I, I was like, yo, people were always tell me, like, what? You're great at motivating. You're great at motivating. You get people going, right? You know exactly what to say to make them go for what they want to believe in themselves. They're like, you should be a motivational speaker. And I was sitting that sounds great, but I don't want to be on stage all damn time, right? Because that's what I thought it was. And then I looked it up. I was actually deployed in 2016. I was deployed to Afghanistan. And I looked up, like, what I could do outside of motivational speaking. Coaching pops up. Now, at this time, I felt like I had a great handle on who I was, like you said, a self-mastery and all the other stuff. But I found coaching, start living not low while I'm overseas in Afghanistan, go through some coach training, but then November 2016, uh, November 12th over there, which was November 11th here, um, a suicide bomber detonates Veterans Day. We're all lined up for a run. Suicide bomber detonates, takes out some uh, some soldiers, injures, you know, catastrophically some some civilians and other people. And here it was, think, had to kick in the high gear. Then and later on in that night, I did a part of the remains cleanup team. That's pretty much what it sounds like, you pick up the remains of the people who were injured, wounded, or killed. So I didn't realize how that impacted me though when I was doing it. And when I was picking up those remains, what kept going in my mind, like, oh, I'm treating the victims the same way I'm treating the suspect. And it just kept playing in my mind. So six months later, I'm home. I'm home, I say. Six months later, 
that's when that PTSD started kicking me. I started having the same nightmare every night, every night. I didn't enjoy anything in life. I started having suicidal ideations, right? I called my sister and I'm like, Chandra, you know, this is my oldest sister. I'm like, Chandra, I'm, I'm going through it. I called her Cece really, but I was like, I'm going through it. I, I'm crying. I'm explaining. I'm, I, you can't even understand what I'm saying. I couldn't even tell you what I said. And then that day I realized I needed help. And that was the first time I ever reached out to anyone for help. 